What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Talking Halos. I'm your host today, Jared Timms, and I'm joined alongside my co-host, my partner in crime, Nate Green. Nate, Angels are playing some meaning... No, they're playing good baseball. It's, it's too early call. to say. Too no, early to say too they're early. playing meaningful baseball, but good baseball right now. Um, Welcome back to the podcast. Man, I'm excited to get this rolling. Busy, busy, busy here um with baseball season and we got minor leagues starting up here soon too so uh but the grind does not stop i'm i mean you, baseball lower like, minor leagues uh, yeah lower because upper leagues. minor leagues have already started but yeah i'm doing well um good good to be back with the regular season i'm excited um and yeah it's it's fun to to watch angels baseball in uh in regular season action and i mean this is the first time that We've seen a game that mattered for the Angels since about this time last year. So, I mean, it's good. Absolutely. And if this is the first time you are listening to Talking Halos, I appreciate it, first off. Um, we appreciate it, first and foremost. We really, we really, really do. This is kind of how it works during the season for us. We will do series reviews. We'll do some series previews. And we'll touch on um, some things that we noticed during uh, during the series before. Um, and we're actually not too bad at predicting series either. So if you keep count, um, we're not horrible at it either. So uh, I'm not going to give you any key things to uh, to the series ahead, but um, we're, I'm not going to not going to brag. We did we do pretty good as long as you know the Angels stay playing decent baseball. We'll we'll keep on rolling with this here. First, before we get into, because we are going to talk the O's series, we missed that. We're going to talk the Marlins series, which will be a lot more fun. Actually, I. I like talking about losing series we, because I think it's a lot. I think you you learn. We mentioned a little bit with the Baltimore series, but not no. a lot. Yeah. Um. So we're gonna talk O's series here. We're gonna we're gonna talk the Marlins series. Fun series to watch for sure. And then we're gonna talk the opening uh, opening homestand uh, or opening series home series against home the Boston openers Red Sox. Um. Uh, which I know down in SoCal you guys are expecting some rain, so we're hoping nothing gets too rained out. Um. But you talk to Taylor Blake Ford, he's not too optimistic. He's it never times. rains. The yeah. angels never get rained out. Like they get they've gotten rained out like twice in the last yeah. 10 yeah. years. So Taylor Blake Ward and I have talked on the phone like eight times this week because minor league stuff and and um and he's every single time has said they're gonna play a doubleheader on Saturday. So um if they do play a doubleheader Saturday, you can blame Taylor Blake Ward for it. So um I'm seeing thirty five percent in Orange, California on, yeah, on Friday. Nice. He'll they'll be fine then. So, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching and listening to this podcast here at Talking Halos. Really do appreciate it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you have not already. Give us your thoughts in the comments down below about this. The Angels' first road stand. Um, Angels go four and two, obviously. So let us know how you feel about that. Um, we'll talk about it here in a second. Go ahead and follow us on all our social medias: X, Instagram, and Facebook. Follow myself on X at Jared and Sport Tim's Nate at Nate Green Thirty Four. And let's get it rolling. O's series. Nate, kind of a rough one to start off with. You knew the Angels were gonna hopefully try to pull one, pull one out there at the end. Um, we saw Reed Detmer's shove. Um, obviously, the Angels take or lose um, two of three there. But you you always want to end a series on on a high note. The Angels get the win. I think that got them rolling into the Marlins series, which we'll talk about. But O's series first first three games. Um, let's talk Patrick Sandoval first because I know we want to talk Patrick Sandoval. I know we talked about him a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. but for yeah, me, last time we talked a little bit. Maybe, yeah, we did talk a little bit um as well. And hey, look at that. Speaking of Taylor Blake Ward, get a text message from him on this, but um, but Sandoval, night and day difference between how he started uh against the O's and how he started against against the Marlins was not overthrowing sometimes. Uh, with, with guys like that, you you get the overthrow. Uh, the fl shoulder flies out. We saw a lot of off speed away in that o O's series, up and away. Um, I think he hit a couple guys, and um, it just wasn't wasn't quite him. I don't, and I know we kind of made fun of it and said Tyler Anderson should should be the opening day starter. Um, well, you guys did. I did. I, I know. I I know. But it's something that I feel like Patrick Sandoval, and, and this goes back to what we said, can't necessarily control his emotions all that well and isn't going to pitch well in those situations um now i know he pitched well in the world baseball classic but like when he overthrows you can really tell um when he can keep it under control like he did in the marlin series he looks fantastic and he looked really good um today um or yesterday whenever you're watching this against the miami marlins but go ahead take it away i know you want to talk maybe a little sandoval canning detmers yeah um sandoval we kind of already touched on a little bit um 
wasn't throwing strikes early. And then of course the air behind him and, you know, that's, that's where things really fall apart for him when, when things don't go his way, whether it's an air, whether it's a, a called strike that should have, or a called ball that should have been a strike, things like that. That's where he really um, struggles. So I think that was a, a rough outing for him in Baltimore. A lot of emotions, a lot of things going on. Um, never really had a opening day start. So a lot of things that he just wasn't used to. And um, yeah, he's just not really good in those situations. Canning. Um, yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Kind of got got bit late by by the bullpen. Um, threw the ball pretty well, honestly. I, he 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 threw like as as he kind of always does. Like his his five innings, his three runs. He's got a couple punchies. Um, not too many walks. Like he looks the same to me. Uh, early on, obviously things could could continue to get better for him, but right now he just kind of looks like exactly where he picked off lot picked. He picked up right where he left off last year, which is which is fine. Like he's somewhere in the upper threes to a low four ERA guy. He's a, he's a good three four five starter, probably a four five starter, and um, a guy that probably moves to the pen in the postseason. That that type of guy, not a guy that you're looking to be an ace of a staff. But and I, I thought I texted you right away. By mm-hmm. the way, after that yeah. after the start, and I said he's going to give up. They're going to give up. It's going to be five runs because he left two guys on base there. Because yep, yep. um, you 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 could kind of tell the bullpen you wasn't gonna, was gonna wasn't going to happen. You knew it was going to happen, um, and and that's what ended up happening. So you look at the stats and it you know he gives up five runs, which isn't what you want. But if you watch the game, it was like and he struggled early. He settled down. He looked he looked good. And yeah, a typical uh, typical Griffin Canning start to be honest. There you go five and five six give up three runs. You know, obviously he gave up five, but. Again, if you watch, yeah, it, but it, it easily could have been box. three, yeah. So, and then Reed Detmers looked. Detmers looked really good. I think that was the best that I've seen Detmers early on in, in the season. Um, he was, you okay. know, what was a big key for me, and you're you're not gonna like it. No more sweeper. He's just throwing the hard slider and the big overhand curve with the fastball changeup, and I think that's a big key for him. He's he was throwing those four pitches and those four pitches only. He should not be a sweeper guy. Um, not with well, the big got, overhand curveball, big like, overhand curveball. You need something, yeah. you need something sharp that bites away and you got to change yeah, it. So yeah. So he was a big sweeper guy last year. And I, I'm not a huge fan of the sweeper with his repertoire, um, more sliders and the overhand curveball with the change up, change up played off really well, um, attacked and, and he looked really, really good. I think that was, that was a big takeaway for me was just, Hey, he went out there and he, he threw strikes and, um, uh, yeah, he yeah. had to fight through. Huh? You have his average Velo. Of that start, uh, I can check for you as because that was that was talking. something that and and when the Angels drafted, when Angels draft, I'll tell you guys kind of a little interesting story here. I think I've said as I look this up for you. Yeah, I think I've I think I've said it before on this podcast. The Angels drafted Reed Detmers, 2020, the playing in Long Beach. They wanted him to start throwing harder. That was the Billy Epler, um, the, the Billy Epler team. They wanted him to actually start throwing a little bit harder because he does have that in his back pocket. He can kick at 95, 96 if he needs it. Um, which is why I'm asking you how hard he was. He throwing. sat 94.4. Okay, so he was he was throwing that firm fastball like he does. He actually told told the Angels, "No, I will not. Um, I I won't throw harder because he thought his stuff played better." Um, we saw it was it the beginning of last year where we saw him throwing the firm the more. He was firm throwing fastball. way harder early on, and then yeah. he was throwing the stupid sweeper on top of the upper nines, like he was 95, 97 fastball, which is fine. But the the sweeper is not a good mix with what he likes to do. He likes to throw the the Clayton Kershaw type curveball. That's why everyone compares him to Kershaw's because he has that curveball um, and the changeup. But the hard slider is what made Kershaw Kershaw, right? Like Kershaw was always a really good pitcher with the with the big overhand curveball. But he will even tell you that he became a better pitcher when he added the slider, and it wasn't a soft sweeping slider. It was the firm upper eights, low nine slider that made him who he was. And I think that was the big thing that I saw from Detmers. The seven punchies was huge. Uh, yeah, he walked three guys, but I thought he, he competed really well. And and again, a, a, against a really good Baltimore lineup, just like Canning, you know, again, really good lineup. Um, also, just his, his stuff was just really good. If you look at the numbers, 94.4, his, his slider was up to 86, uh, sitting 86. So it was probably 86, 87. Um, the, the curveball was 75 and the, the changeup was 85. So he, he was really able to mix all four pitches with velo and spots. Um, yeah, he had the three walks and that's what I believe the, 
the inning he gave up the run is when he when he walked a couple guys. So good things out of him. Hopefully he continues to get better. Um, he's the guy who really could make some big strides in this rotation. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. And and going back to those series, those series one more time, the offense just wasn't there early. They faced some good pitching. We knew that was going to be the case. Um, and I, I'll. I'll say it now. I was going to say it after the Marlins series, but the Angels are going to do this all year. I think they're going to they're not going to play all that well against good teams. Um, they're, I think they're going to kind of they're going to kind of let you down a little bit against those good teams. They might play good. They might play well against a good team every once in a while. But I think for the most part, if they split series or lose two to two of three of them, I, I think that's kind of where the Angels are going to sit this year, unfortunately. And a good seg segue into the Marlins series where the Angels go out there and sweep a not very good, not very competitive team at the moment. Um, I, I actually thought the Marlins were going to take a game, especially after getting swept right off the bat there by the Pirates. Um, so I, I was decently surprised at that. The uh, Marlins offense looks really bad. It does. It really, really bad. Really does. Like, all together, everybody. They all, it it kind of just in general looks bad. It doesn't look like a playoff team, which um, you know, they were they – were, almost a playoff team um, last year, or a couple of years ago, where it was like, Oh, the Marlins are kind of taking steps in the right direction. Now it just doesn't, it doesn't feel that way anymore um, for, for the Marlins. So I, this obviously this isn't a Marlins podcast, but you know, it's kind of, kind of interesting to see, but the angels do take the sweep against uh, uh do take. They did make the playoffs last year, by the they way. They did, didn't they? Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought. I remember that. So it just didn't, it didn't, doesn't feel like that early for the Marlins. You never know. Baseball is a long, a long season. So, um, but, Again, the Angels sweep the Miami Marlins in Miami. Big one. Yeah, that's that's a that's a big sweep early. No, it's huge. You, you got to win road games. Like yeah. at, at the end of the year, if if you want to be a competitive team, you want to be able to say, "Hey, we were around maybe a couple games over 500 on the road, around 500 to a couple games over, and then be about 15 games, 10, 15 games over 500 at home." And you look up, and that's how you end up with like 85, 90 wins. So it's big to be to for the angels to win these road games, no matter who they are. Um, the schedule is what it is. You got to win, win the games where they're at. And it doesn't matter if you're playing Baltimore, New York, and and all these really good teams on the road, or if you're playing Miami and all these, these teams that aren't that good so far on the road, you, you just got to win the games uh, because it, it does matter. Like everyone thinks you can't lose games. You can't lose the division in April, but I, I think you really can. Like it's a, it's a big deal to start winning games early because that's when teams start to believe in it, in themselves. Like you look at Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh keeps winning. They could be a team that's like, wow, we actually have a shot. They bring up Paul Skeens. They bring up another guy. All of a sudden pirates are in the playoffs this year. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but like that's why winning games early is very important. Absolutely. So let's start with game. One of that series, Miami Marlins um, against the Los Angeles, Mike Trouts and um, Mike Trout shine very bright in that first game there with the two home runs. Fantastic game. By the way, that was a re- that was a really fun game um, to watch. Angels battled it out uh, there until the very end. Gave up four in the first, and then you know kind of took care of the rest. Um, was that still Seth start? Yeah. Can I lose my mind real quick on on this one because I'm a big Chase Sill Seth guy. Everybody waiting yeah. for it. Go ahead and take it. Yeah, I know. I know everyone's gonna be like, Nate, you said Chase Sill Seth is good. Yada yada yada. The guy with the best stuff on the staff cannot throw to the worst defensive catcher. It is unacceptable. Matt Dice killed Chase Silseth. And and it, it's just obvious. Like Matt Dice should never ever catch Chase Silseth. I'll, it is it I'll is say this terrible. To, to your to your point here, and listeners are gonna be uh, listeners are gonna be like, oh, this doesn't make a lot of sense what you're saying. Matt Dice never caught Shohei Otani for a reason. Um, until until Ohapi got hurt, obviously. Um, and we've said it before, Shohei Otani's repertoire reminds us a lot of Chase Silseth's repertoire. And it's very similar, but yeah, yeah, it's it's the other way around. You get what I'm saying, but it's very similar there. So I don't disagree with you on that. I think that if Thice is catching Silseth, it's not good. I'd rather see Thice catch Tyler Anderson. Anderson. Tyler Anderson is the perfect guy for him to catch. You know who I'd really rather see catch? It's Chad Wallach. Because I don't think that Matt Thice is a very good defensive Yeah, but you're kind of stuck with Chad. You're kind of stuck with Matt Thice. So you, you can't have that, but... Yeah, I I was pretty pissed off to see Matt Dice catching um to start that game just because Chase Hill's stuff is so good and you saw it 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 affected the game early. He walks the leadoff guy, the second guy gets on on a catcher's interference and that changes the whole inning. Um 
Matt Dice doesn't do a real great job of framing either. So, yeah, I, I think this start from Silseth says more about who the catcher was than who uh, started on the mound. And actually, if you want to get into it, Logan O'Hoppy caught the final three innings of the game. Simber pitched to him, Matt Moore pitched to him, uh, Carlos Estevez pitched to him. And I would I would argue that Simber, Moore, and Estevez were the best three pitchers in the game. Uh, I didn't think Cisneros pitched that good. I thought he got a little lucky with with some hard hit balls at guys. Uh, I didn't think Suarez pitched that good. He had two walks and a hit. Yeah, I know you're going to say shocking that I didn't think Suarez pitched good, but I didn't think he pitched that good. Um, he did his job, don't get me wrong, but I didn't think he pitched uh, that good. When you look at Simber, Simber comes in, uh, first and second, one out, one pitch, six four three out of the inning, goes back out there. The next inning goes one two three with a punchy. Um, Matt Moore comes in and looked outstanding. Matt Moore looks really, really good early. That's that's big for the Angels to have a guy who can get righties and lefties out in the back end of the pen. Uh, and then Estevis, you know, he's always going to scare you, but he he did his job. He gave up a hit, but I think the game turned for the Angels pitching staff when the Logan O'Hoppy caught the final three innings of that game. And it all it, the only reason he caught the final three innings of that game is because the Marlins went to uh, Nardi, the lefty from Ventura, um, in that inning. And and all of a sudden, they're like, well, we don't want Thice face in the lefty, so we'll go O'Hoppy. And O'Hoppy ends up getting to, to catch the last three innings, which was huge for the Angels. And that's kind of when they took uh, took the lead in the eighth and ninth inning. So I I cannot stress enough how important it is catcher pitcher combination yeah no, i i i agree with you in this case i there are some times where i you know won't necessarily agree with that but um i do think with chase still that that is that that that's a big thing there so on to game two here arguably the best game best pitch game um in this in this series you had tyler anderson go seven innings should have been the opening day starter sure. yeah, Ty- tyler anderson going seven innings giving up four hits Boy, what are you talking about that he four hits, Nate? Yeah, congrats. And you're saying he's a tough – he said he didn't pitch all that well. He had five strikeouts. I, I said Suarez didn't pitch that well. I said – I no. thought – I said – You called me. I called you on the I, way. I, I said I thought I said, he got oh, Tyler lucky. Tyler Anderson. I said I thought he got lucky. I didn't say he didn't pitch well. I said I thought he got lucky. Um, if you were if you watched the game, one of the, one of the big plays of the game came in the first inning. There was first and second uh, one out. Uh, Avisil Garcia swings at a pitch that Jazz Chisholm had third base stolen standing up. It was ridiculous. Uh, could have been second and third. Instead, Garcia flies out to center. Uh, Chisholm overruns third base, doesn't touch it on the way back, gets thrown out second on the on the video review, and, and the Angels get out of the inning. It could have been second and third, one out with a guy who hits the ball in the air. Um, and, and all of a sudden, it's one nothing, and you're starting to think, oh, Tyler Anderson having the typical Tyler Anderson game. Just because everyone's going to blow me up about Tyler Anderson, how good he looked. I, w- I went back and, and did this just for you guys. April 2nd, 2023, Tyler Anderson started against the Oakland A's. Six innings, four hits, similar. Um, three free bases, a hit by pitch, two walks, four Ks. And he did not allow a run. Tyler Anderson, he might be an all-star. We don't know that. And, and he didn't allow a run, and it was Oakland. Oakland's a really good ball club, if you ask some people, right? Um, I believe they finished last in Major League Baseball and runs scored. As you, as we know, his his season didn't end as well as that start was. Um, April 2nd, I think they wanted to keep him on the April 2nd day just because he had success there last year. And uh, April 2nd again, 2024, Tyler Anderson, seven innings, four hits, two walks, five Ks, almost identical to the year before with the numbers, um, he went one extra inning, had uh, one extra K and one less walk. But for the most part, he had identical numbers. And I know everyone's going to be like, but Nate, Oakland and Miami are different. Oakland was not a playoff team. Miami was a playoff team. Just if, in case you want to pull that crap with me, Miami was 26th in runs scored. The last year was 666 runs. Oakland was 30th in runs scored. So he wasn't exactly facing the Bronx Bombers of – of 1908 or any of these, any of these crazy offenses that you're like, Oh man, these, these are crazy offenses. He's facing a team that's hasn't hit well so far to start the year. Um, I guess it was 1919. That's on me. Mm. Um, yeah, the 1919 Yankees, um, he's facing a team that struggled offensively so far. And then also 
they they weren't a good offense last year. So we're let's wait and see before we start saying Tyler Anderson is back to the Dodger way. I, I I'm sorry, I had to look up 1908 Yankees. They weren't the Yankees at that time. Can you can you guess what they it's, were? Uh, don't even. They were called the Highlanders at that point. You want to know what their record was? What was it? 51 and 103. Yeah. <laughs> it was the 1919 Yankees where they were really, really good. Yeah. Um, I had to look at it. I wanted to know. I, I was, was like, I was off by 11 years, but out of nowhere. But, but you know what I mean, right? Like he wasn't exactly facing the greatest lineup ever. Um, and we, we've seen the Marlins don't look good early. Uh, Luis Arise is not hitting. Um, Josh Bell's not hitting. Luis Arise is hitting under 200 right now. I don't know if Luis Arise hit under 200 at all last year. Well, Luis Arise uh, struck out twice or once. I know, and that twice against and him? that doesn't happen. Yeah, twice, yeah, it doesn't uh, today. No, he struck out twice today. Twice today, yeah. Um, yeah. So the, this lineup does not look like it like it normally does. This lineup does not look really good. Um, and I know some people are already pointing to the Kim. Uh, to, to Kim, who was the the old GM who kind of got pushed out of there and like, hey, she kind of made this team a lot better because of everything. And honestly, like, they just pitch. That's what they do. They pitch and they have a lot of injuries and they, they didn't pitch that well this year. So I'm glad Tyler Anderson pitched well, but let's not start putting him down for Cy Young votes right now. No, no, no. It's just good to see him, see Angels pitching staff get off on the right on the right page because that is what I think we think the angels need to do well to, to compete. Yeah. You got to pitch. You, you, you definitely have to compete, um, have to pitch to compete. So let's move on to the third game. We'll get on the series, the series preview for the Red Sox um, and then get our butts out of here. So angels face Nate, to be fair, the angels are facing the Oakland A's anyways. They face Lazardo on, on the yeah. second game, <laughs> AJ, AJ, Puck. AJ Puck on the third game. Yeah. Um, so a lot of familiar faces there for the angels, but I mentioned before Tyler Sandoval, or Tyler Sandoval, wow. Patrick Sandoval looked very, very good. Um, kept that front side in really got the change up working, um, early. And that was, that was a huge factor for, for, for him there on that side of stuff, by the way, um, Patrick Sandoval stuff plus wise has one of the best sliders in, in, in baseball. I know that's not everything, but it's kind of, kind of nice to have. That, that was the pitch that was really good for him in the world baseball classic too. Yeah. Once, if you can get that going, that's, that's a, that's a huge thing there. So, um, but just in general, a good baseball game played, um, played there by the angels. By the way, Guillermo Zuniga threw the three innings today. Mm -hmm. pretty 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 solid there um well that's that's big because this bullpen gets a day off um tomorrow or today depending on where when you're listening april 4th they get the day off um and they need it they've been taxed um and and that's what you expect you expect the bullpen to be taxed early um but yeah that's huge for them to not have to use matt moore on a third straight day or carlos estevez for a third day out of four um or even jose soriano again like jose soriano he's going to be a key to this bullpen and to not have to use him in this game is huge. Um, so yeah, it, it was really big for them to just be able to go out there and say, Hey, Cisnero, you, you've thrown a lot lately. Simber, you've thrown a lot. Um, Cisnero, you got one out and that was kind of it. And then Zuniga kind of was able to pick up some slack and be like, Hey, I'll go get three. I won't pitch on Friday. Most likely I'll be available Saturday, but everyone in the pen should be available Friday, which is huge. Yeah, and there's options there as well. So maybe a small chance he gets sent down after throwing three innings. I doubt, I doubt it. it. You never you, know. You, you don't reward you don't reward a guy by sending him down after throwing three shutty. Hey, you would assume not, but I've seen with an off day. Seen with happen, an off day, seen it happen before. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, big big player of the game and and off to a hot start. Taylor Ward. Taylor there. Ward. Taylor um, Ward looks really he, good. He looks really good. Taylor Ward, the baseball player. Don't mistake him for the reporter, but, um, but yeah, he's, he's swinging it. Well, he's swinging a good bat, hot bat again. I hope he continues this. I hope he stays healthy. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a big bat there that I m- might start thinking about leading off or at least batting a little closer to, uh, well, I guess he batted behind Mike. Trump. No, I, I think he's good where he's at, honestly. Uh, I think the, bi- the big thing is Aaron Hicks. Aaron Hicks, they need someone in that two hole who's going to get on base for Mike Trout. Uh, and Hicks just really isn't doing that right now. He hasn't looked good early, but you're, you're going to need someone in this lineup to step up. Logan O'Hoppy is a guy that I, I look to see, is he possibly going to move up in this order? Because he's got off to a really hot start. Uh, it might be too early to be like, oh, hey, we're going to put batch of five behind 
Taylor Ward, or we're going to hit you four behind Trout and put Ward uh, two, but they're going to need to get some productivity from someone in front of Mike Trout. They can't rely on Mike Trout to hit two homers every night, Taylor Ward to hit a homer and have three or four doubles. Like They're going to need more than just two or three guys in this lineup to win baseball games. Yep. So let's get on to the home opening series for the Angels here. Let's just give previews here. I know we're running out a little bit out of time. Pitching matchup for the home opener, Griffin Canning against Cutter Crawford. Who do you got there? Angels win the game. Um, Yeah, I know. That's crazy. Angels win the game, stay hot. Uh, Crawford threw really well in his first start, but I, I I know he has some underlying numbers that look a lot better for him. Um, but I, I just don't think he, he's very average. He's very similar to Griffin Canning. And I like, um, I like where the angels have been at. I think their offense is a little bit better than Boston's right now. I don't think Boston's got a lot of young guys that they're hoping, um, can continue to hit. And I, I think the angels have a little bit more veteran presence with Taylor Ward and Mike Trout and Brandon Drury, guys like that, get them home, get them hot. Boston's been on the road. I th- I think the Angels win game one. Yeah, and uh, just looking at matchups and everything like that, these pit- hitters haven't faced these pitchers very very much. It's going to be an interesting um, interesting matchup for sure. Angels, I'll say, win the home opener, um, but it's going to come down to the bullpen there um, on both sides. I'm going to say both pitchers go, you know, that those close to that five innings, give up, you know, three four runs, and we'll we'll see where it goes from there. Um, game two, Garrett Whitlock. Goes against Reed Detmers. Fun, fun matchup there. A couple yeah. young players. Um, I, it's hard for me to go like, to say anything against Griffin Canning right now. Um, but Garrett Whitlock's also a very, very good pitcher as well. Uh, you mean Detmers? Uh, yes, did I say Whitlock twice yeah. there? So, no, you said, uh, said Canning. Canning. Like, okay, so Canning. yeah, it's hard for me to say anything negative about Detmers. So, uh, it's going to come down to the bullpen again here. Um, on this side of stuff, I think it's going to be another close game. Um, but I'm going to say. Man, I'm going to say the Angels for somehow outduel the Red Sox again um, and win this game. I agree. I think the Angels win uh, again. It's been a long road trip for the Red Sox as well. They started the year in Seattle, then they then they went to Oakland. Now they're coming to Anaheim. I think that's that's tough on a team um, to be on the road for this long to open up the year, which that sucks for the Red Sox. But um, I think I think Detmers throws again, throws well again, and and continues to. Uh, show that he is on his way to uh, being a, a guy in this rotation. Yep. And get to game three, another real fun pitching matchup there. Yeah. Tanner Houck against Chase Silseth, a couple of dudes with some really good stuff there. Um, oh man, dude, I, I, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be a pitcher's duel. Those last two games are really going to be pitcher's duel. I think the first game's um, going to be about the bullpen, but those, those second, the second game and third game are really going to be pitcher's duels here. Um, Angel, uh, no, they haven't, Red Sox haven't faced, uh, Chase Silseth, yes. Well, once and not a lot of guys have faced him. Uh, it's tough for me to go against Silseth here too, but I'm going to say the Red Sox um, get out of there with a get get out of there with a win. Um, but dude, the Angels could go in there and c- could come home and sweep the Red Sox too and win what seven straight. So yeah, um, and and this is where I will justify what I'm going to say. If Matt Dice catches this game, the Red Sox win. Okay. It's a it's an afternoon game, um, after a night game, which is typically when you see the uh, backup catcher. So that is my big scare in this game is Matt Dice catches again, and that's a bad bad thing for Chase Silseth. Well, um, to to that point even more, you got a righty on the mound, so you're probably you're probably sitting. Well, Silseth you're seeing you're seeing, seeing all righties, all yeah. all series. You're seeing righties, so that's not that big of a deal to me. But I I think with the afternoon game on Sunday, you have a, a good chance of getting Matt Thice. And if that's the case, the Red Sox win. If Matt Thice does not catch though, I think the angels sweep the series. I know the Red Sox have played really. They've pitched really well early. They uh, they've given up 11 earned runs going into the series in, in two series so far in seven games, but they have not faced a good lineup yet. They faced Seattle. Seattle does not look good. Their lineup looks really, really bad early. And of course, we know Oakland is not that good either. So they're just kind of making their way through the uh, the bottom of the American League West right now. If teams are probably going into the year, you had them penciled finishing third, fourth, and fifth. So um, if Silseth gets the right catcher, they sweep the series. If Silseth gets dice, they win two out of three. 
Interesting. You just call the Angels a good offensive team. So with all that being said, no, I'm not letting you finish. They, it. they have Mike Trout. It's and Taylor Ward's playing out of his mind. Uh, this offense looks competent. I mean, I've watched too many Mariner games and I've watched Oakland enough to know that nobody that often no that offense just doesn't look competent for either team. Uh, Seattle's chasing a lot. They're swinging and missing a lot, and it's just not great early for them. And they face Cleveland and and Boston, both teams that are like probably hoping to win about 83, 84 games. Um, if they're honest with themselves, Cleveland could win their division, but their division is not really good. Uh, Boston's thinking they're probably the last place team in the American League East, which, yeah, they could win 82 games and, and be like the first division ever to have five teams over 500. But they're, they're probably looking at being last place in the American League East. Yeah, that's fair. So, well, that being said, guys, thank you again so much for watching and listening. You can follow us on all our social medias, X, Instagram, and Facebook. You can follow myself on X, Jared underscore Tim's Nate and Nate Crane 34. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. Mm-hmm.